Hi folks, I'm just here again with Gun and Batty Jack Amara. I thought I'd bring you an update on what's going on with the the tribal land. There's been a few questions. I'll give you a little bit of a pan around here to have a look at what's going on. This is the land we're talking about. For anybody who's familiar with Australia, there's Mount Warning over there. It's a pretty nice sort of a place here that we're sitting in, folks. But um, there's been a few questions, so we're going to try to clear up some of the stuff. There's... This land has a little bit of a history. There's a little bit of bad press with one of the previous owners, and I've had a few emails and a few people questioning what's going on and stuff. So uh, Gunnam wants to sort all that out as well and tell you exactly what's going on here and what they're kind of looking at, the sort of people they want to have involved and what the vision is here. So I'll hand you over to Gunnam a little bit, and uh, wrong way, and uh, he can tell you a little bit about what's what's going on. So give us a bit of a spiel on what's going on here with all this Gunnam. Well, what's going on is that, that um, uh, nothing has there's no, there's nothing no issues with any previous owner of this this block that's been bought to 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 undertake this development. Um, there was a block next door that was bought, and the people who were involved in the purchase of that block um, fell out, and that ended up um, with one particular person but a group of people but one particular person making certain allegations against the people behind this project and um, ultimately what happened was that the Supreme Court decided that um, nothing that had been said about this development or the people behind this development or um, any aspect of anything to do with Nightcap um, was at fault in any way, shape, or form in relation to anything to do with any land, um, you know? Um, and, and the court actually was quite derisive um, of the woman who was making the complaints, G. Linda Norman, Gillian Linda Norman, uh, and it quite clearly stated that she had no concept of or an understanding of any of the concepts that she was trying to to uh, bring before the court. She was making allegations that there was fraud, mismanagement of funds, and this and that, and this and that, and da da da. da. Um, there was nothing. Yeah. It was her imagination and the and the um, underhanded um, behaviour of, of her solicitors that was the problem. So what's what's the vision here? Like, and people have to understand as well, folks. Like, what what we've got here. This is this land here. Is whoops. I'm trying to get this camera right, folks. Sorry about this. I'm a bit <laughs> bit uh, unfamiliar with this shit. Technology, it's not my best forte. But anyway, you know, when when you come in here and buy this land, this is kind of raw land here. You know, you're not buying into a housing development. You're not buying into a housing estate. You're coming in to to set up a, a, a new community, and you know they're working to put all the roads in. There's a lot of roads here as well. They've already been tarred and all sorts of stuff. There's a lot of work to be done. So, you know, when you come here, you buy into this place. You're not just buying a house block with all the amenities that you get from a town house block. You, you're moving into the bush, and you're setting up. Uh, you know what, what has a you know, it's going to be a self-sufficient community with, with a great vision but it's it's starting from scratch so you've got to really look at what you're buying into and realize that it, it's going to create work it's going to um, need work you know you've got to come here and and start anew that's what it's all about and with all the stuff that's happening that's going on in the world I mean it's a great place to kind of you know ha have an escape to where, you, where you're on land which is going to be under tribal law it's, it's going to be under it's, it's tribal land so once it all gets is done and it's all finalized because they're buying extra land onto it and all sorts of stuff but once it's all finalized which is only like a few weeks away you know a couple of weeks away till it's all finalized then this is going to be you know a, a place with a vision for those people that have that vision so um, i want to make that clear you know you're not buying into a, a housing estate with all the amenities you're going to get in town you're moving in to set up your own space in a pretty pristine environment you know so um, but having said that mate, um, um, any house that's built or any structure that's that's, that's erected is, it will have to comply with Australian standards um, the reason for that is we believe that um, remove the word Australian and what it is is a set of standards and there from an engineering point of view and a safety standards point of view they're an acceptable group of standards that that make it easy for um, the community and the developers to be able to safeguard each other because the last thing you want is your neighbours your neighbours uh, tin shack blowing across the front lawn and slamming into your house you know what I mean yeah um, you know we've got to be responsible to each other and and um, you know everything that goes on here will be done to a standard a proper 
um, I suppose you'd call it a legal standard. We meet all the rules, we check all the boxes, we do everything in the, on the matrix side of the divide. Um, but once you come onto the property, um, that's when you, you can truly feel at home. Um, you know, you get to live in amongst all this. You know, um, it's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty good. Eh? What, what's your vision for the place? What, what, do, you, what do you really want to do here, Gunnar? Um, all we want to do is establish a community of, of people that sort of um, <clears throat> are not necessarily um, conspiracy theorists or nutters or anything like that at all. Most of the people that are inquiring to, to, to buy in here um, are people that have quite well-developed skill sets from electrical engineering, um, IT, um, AI, um, uh, earthworks, building and construction, you name it, people from all walks of life. But they're responsible people, mostly with families, who just want to um, bring their families up and live somewhere where they can actually breathe fresh air and live as part of a community where there are community gardens, for example, that we all tend and we all live from. And it's not its not an airy-fairy idea. It's just a, a concept that some people will get and some people won't, you know. The best part about it, though, is that... Um, um, by covenant, um, everybody here will will live according to the, the base law of the local tribe, the Minjimbal tribe, you know, and that base law is do no harm. So um, between being responsible and doing no harm, it should be quite different to uh, most townships and city and, uh, societies that I know of. You know, it's just for, for a want of a peaceful place. You know, there are a lot of benefits from living here. Everybody who buys a block ultimately will be getting paid to live here because there are a number of businesses owned by the development um, that will only continue, they will be rebuilt um, and will continue to grow because the development itself, you get you know, a few hundred people living houses here with people living in them, they will feed their own need for a supermarket. And again, the community owns the supermarket so the money comes back into the community. You know, um, Same as the service station, same as the pub, same as everything else owned by the community. And every cent that people passing through spend comes back to this community mm. as a dividend from those businesses. Yeah, that, so, all, that all works out really well. So what, what about people who wanted to, like say, like you need a certain, you, you're buying land next door as well. Like you've got, you need a certain amount of money to continue this and to get mm. it to where you want. Yeah. So you need, say, like 20 or 30 people to buy in, for example. Oh, look, we'd, we'd, we'd like to sell... All of the blocks, you know, like, you know, the, we've got we've got 800 or so blocks that we can sell. We'd like to sell them all because that would mean there would be 800 homes here with 800 people, 800 families um, working as a community. But, you know, um, in order to get things moving along a bit now, we'd like to sell, you know, gee, to sell 20 blocks, 30 blocks now would be a godsend because that would pay for, you know, the, well, the tarring and sealing of the roads and all the infrastructure, the final construction, need. and all that sort of stuff. So, because obviously, when you're talking about a development like this big, you know, there's there's a lot of costs involved. For example, um, you know, the roads. There's 28 kilometres of tar roads, which if you if you go out and you get borrowed to come in at a million dollars a kilometre, it's 28 million dollars in roads. You know, someone's someone's got to pay for that. Um, we've been asked the question, ironically, some people said, "Oh, listen." You know, I'll come and live on the tribe's land. I'll put up a house and I'll do this. Yeah, but you've got to buy a block of land. Why do I have to buy a block of land if it's... Tri well, we're not going to repeat what was done 230 years ago. Um, the tribe have a right to get a benefit from this estate. Now, this this estate is being bought and then the benefit that's going back to the tribe will be going back to the tribe from the development company, okay? And the, and the, the, the benefit for the tribe will be you know, um, we're, we're providing house lots and we're building homes for the elders and their families. We're, we're going to be providing a whole lot of different things to the tribe, including financial reward from each of the, the sale of each of the blocks, etc., etc., will go to the tribe. Now, that said, that has to come from somewhere. For all these great things to happen, it has to be paid for because we still live effectively, um, even though it might be a bit of a bubble to the matrix, we still live in the matrix. We have to interact with it. We have to pay for the land. We have to pay for... Moral won't come in and do the roads for us simply because we are like-minded people who think that we shouldn't have to pay for it. It doesn't work like that, you know? Um, so we've got to pay for the roads to be built. Mm. We've got to pay for... Instead of having uh, 5G on this, there will be no 5G on this development. 
we'll be having a one single satellite dish that will be um, the node for a um, optic fiber system that will be laid to the gate of each of the, the blocks. So that from there it's just a matter you run your own optic fiber from your front gate to your house. Mm. You know? Um, and it's optic fiber through satellite. That's it's just you know, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, but we don't have we don't we don't want the five G radiation. We don't want the five G nuisance. Mm. You know. Um, what what about if like if someone wanted to, you know, someone supports the project and they think yeah this sounds great. I want to I want to buy in. I've got you know I've got money to be able to buy a, 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 hand, a house and land package or whatever. But you don't get enough, so you, you can't complete the whole lot. But they they want to come here straight away. I mean, there's container homes that are available. Eh? I mean, you could oh, you could there's, there's there's all sorts of things. I mean, someone could, if someone wanted to buy, it uh, depends what someone wants. We're happy to sit down and talk to anyone. Like, um, but if someone wanted to come here right away and they and you still haven't got the roads done and all, but you yeah. need the money to get it done and they, they're willing to invest in that, they could spend like twenty five grand on a container home. You've got a caravan park there. Yeah. They could drop the container there. They could live in that. Uh, yeah, yeah. For the yeah. next few months, while yeah. everything's being developed, temporarily. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. you could conceivably put like 50, 50 people in caravans in because there's a caravan park attached to the property. Yeah. So you can have people in caravans or container homes that are dropped on the property that could later then be moved up to their oh, look, house block. There's I, all I sorts know. of possibilities. I don't, I don't know. Of, there's, there's all sorts of possibilities, but um, you know, as so far as the caravan park goes, I don't, I don't know what's allowed by council. Not that not that we want to we want to jump to their tune but um we intend to do what we want to do as peacefully as possible um you know um we don't want to be blown with council we're not not scared of council at all but what we want to do is we want to make sure because effectively this is other people's money so we have to make sure that we act responsibly with it we have to make sure that um our own political ideals don't get in the way of the reality that there are certain things at this point in time that we have to do. We have to tick certain boxes. We have to say yes, no, and do all the right things, um, comply, make everything work. It is possible to do this. And that's what we'll do. Um, whether people can dump a house here or put that there, blah, 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 it'll be on a case-by-case, case, obviously. So we'd have, to, we'd have to just deal with council on a case-by-case, case, you know, yes. um, until such times as um, there, there are plans... Um, for um, us to be able to do something in relation to council, um, which will give us a different standing. But we won't go into that at the moment because we don't want to wet our gunpowder on that particular possibility. So, all right, I'm just I'm just questioning, like you know, if people do want to buy in, but they can't come and actually build a house straight away because the roads aren't sealed or whatever. Well, you know, they can't get uh, internet to it or whatever at the moment. But there's a possibility if they want to get out quickly, they want to get out of the city or whatever. Is there a possibility they can buy into the land and, and set up some way of coming here to stay here? Uh, quite, as, quite possibly. There, are, there are 26 houses I believe on the property um, which are rented out at the moment. And if people wanted to buy, there's an option. There's 26 houses here. Come and have a look at them. You know. Um, you know, there's an option there. That's one option. So, like I said, there's, there's, it's a case by case basis how people want to do things. Hmm. You know, um, there are so many different options and different ways that we can accommodate people that want to buy in here. All we want to know is that the people have the right mindset. You know, we're not, we're not, we're not looking for um, nutters. We're just looking for people who like to know that where they live is free from 5G radiation, um, is as close to Mother Nature as they can get. Um, part of the pro part part of what living here is gonna gonna mean is that that um, there'll be a high interaction with the tribal people on their country. These people, the old people, we've been sitting with the old people for some time now in the development of the project, and they're keen as mustard to get in with the the, the people who buy in and teach them about country, teach them all about country, as part of being part of the community. You know, it's it's going to be a different way of doing things. Even down to the even down to the street names, you know, the roads won't have names. We're going to have totem poles at the corners, and you'll you'll be number whatever on such and such, you know. Just just the tiny things. It's going to do everything differently, hmm. you know. So whether we can accommodate people in, in uh, different ways if they want to buy in and move in and move on or whatever, yeah, we can. But it would be what it's a matter of hmm. like how long's a piece of string, you know. Yeah. Um, and the answer to that is twice the distance from the centre to one end. But the, <laughs> the 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 thing is, like, they would have to come to us with the question, so that we can see what what our options are to offer back. You know, 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's there's plenty of options. Yeah. There's plenty. Yeah. But all this bad press, I mean, this has all been cleared up. It, it's that's what people have to understand as well. It's all been. I don't know if I can change this camera. It's a weird yeah. thing. But so. Uh, well, we know yeah. the, the, the the Supreme Court has ordered, um, even for example, for Google to remove um, uh, any trace of the blogs and her comments in any search completed by the Google search engine. <clears throat> so, and that's just Google. Um, you know, it's it's it wasn't a resounding victory. It was it was it was a sordid farce, um, and it's been really painful and very costly to a, a, a great number of people. Um, you know, there are families there are families who put their, their whole life on the line and into Bulla Bulla um, who got screwed by her and the lunatics that she stood with. You know? Um, I, I, I just don't believe that she did what she did. You know, for no grounds. I, I don't remember how many times was she, has she been offered her money back? Five times in open court. Five times in open court alone. She's had 14 cases now that she's lost on every occasion, in every aspect of everything that she said. And all we're trying to do, we're standing here going, listen, lady, you got hurt over there next door. You got hurt over there. But there's your money. Can you go away? <laughs> and she's saying, no, I want to castigate you people because you bought the property next door to the one that I was involved in. Well, that makes a fucking shitload of sense to me. But that's the logic we've been dealing with. Mm. You know yeah. what I mean? That is the logic that we've been dealing with. That is exactly what happened. The property next door, yeah, as part of what we're doing here, we, we would like to purchase that property. We'd be crazy if we didn't. But that doesn't mean that this property has anything to do with that property. Yeah, that was a whole different you know? bunch of people. So, Well, yeah. some, of the, some of the people involved in that were involved here. Um, but it's a completely different thing. Utterly different. You know, the Supreme, the Supreme Court, for example, was flabbergasted. Justice Fagan was flabbergasted that she couldn't get the concept that this development is not the same as that multiple occupancy. That they're two different properties. They've got nothing to do with each other. Hmm. He was flabbergasted. She couldn't even grasp that concept. Yeah. So how do you deal with people like that? Yeah. And in the end of it, it's cost millions and millions and millions of dollars. But we're still here. The project's still going to go ahead. Um, and the best part about COVID is <clears throat> that I believe people might now see why this type of project is such a wonderful thing and a great opportunity. Um, and at $300,000 a block with dual occupancy, we can build two houses and occupy two houses for $300,000. Find that in Western Sydney. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Two point four seven acres. Find yeah. that in Western Sydney. See how you go. Yeah. And then compare Western Sydney to this. Yeah, there's no real comparison. There's dams, there's uh, all billabongs. sorts of stuff. There's the most beautiful billabongs. And all of those places are going to be retained. They're going to be no go zones, as in no building, you know, blah blah blah. There'll be some community amenities there so that people can swim in the billabongs and the dams and you know, they can be enjoyed. But, um, you know, yeah. all the sacred places on the property, there's quite a few sacred sites and <clears throat> the original walking trails of the tribe and all the rest are all going to be protected. The tribe's going to be running um, cultural tours across the property um, as part of the, the the involvement of the tribe in the land. We're just pulling mob back on the country. They, they want to be here. When we sat down with them a few years ago and said, look, you know, you're... Would you be interested in this sort of a project? They said yes, and they've been su supportive since day one. You know? mm. Yeah, it's a good space, brother. It's a good space. It is, and you can feel it. it's just so peaceful. You know. Mm. So that's the story, folks. That's what's going on down here with the tribal land. If you want to be involved in that, I think it's a pretty honourable project, you know, I've, I've looked into it, you know, because I've been getting a few emails from people saying, yeah, what's, what's going on when I'm, when I'm Googling this project, like Mark said, or Gunham said, it's, it was a different project. Yeah. And Google um, it now, you'll find all that has been removed by order of the court. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it's a completely different project, folks, and this is, I think it's a pretty good opportunity, but like I said, you know, you're buying into raw land here, uh, there's, there's one, I think there's one power line running through the centre of the land, is yeah. there? So, you know, you've got to work out power, you know, if, you, we've got to get power to certain places, and, and there's a lot of work to be done. You know? You're not buying into 
um, uh, an already functioning um, alternate self-contained community sort of thing. This is starting one from the ground up. You know, and people have a chance to get in here on the ground floor and to to be part of the inception of this community. So, you know, I think it's a pretty honourable project. So, um, there'll be some links that I'll put below this video. There'll be an email address you can uh, you can email inquiries to if you want, or an email address. We'll do something like that. There'll be stuff there because the last time I did a report, I didn't really <clears throat> put a lot of information there. I got barraged with emails and stuff from people wanting to know more. And there's going to be links below, and you can email the people involved, not me, and uh, they'll tell you what's going on if you want to be part of this project, or at least come to the property, have a look, check it out, talk to the guys, talk to Gunnar, meet them, you know, see whether it's something you want to be involved in. I think it's pretty, it's a pretty good opportunity, and uh, I think Gunnar's got a good heart, and I trust this, I trust this uh, project. I think it will be good. But anyway, folks, I'll leave that with you, and um, I'll talk to you again soon. Um, Thanks for joining me on this, and I hope that I answered any questions that anybody has. Talk to you soon in La Keshe.